wouldn't it be great if we could develop a vaccine for cancer? Or if we could drastically reduce the rate of obesity in the population? Or if we could completely cure diabetes with just one pill? Well, it would be great, but clearly none of these things is going to happen unless we, society as a whole, invest some resources in making it happen. But how much should we invest? How much is worth to us to eliminate obesity or cancer? And should we invest all in one intervention or should we diversify our portfolio of investments? Questions of this type are of interest to a range of healthcare stakeholders, from health insurance companies to government agencies. Unfortunately, at the moment, we do not have very good answers. And that's why the Center for Health Research at the University of Western Sydney and Capital Market CRC are joining forces to design tools that can be used to study questions of this type in a systematic way. But why are these questions so difficult? To begin with, in order to answer them, we need to have some predictive tools. We need some model that allows to compare how the future looks like under two scenarios. The status quo scenario, in which we do nothing, and the intervention scenario, in which we make some changes, like, for example, eliminating cancer. This model, we need to capture the fact that each of us, at any point in time, has certain probabilities of developing some health conditions, of utilizing a certain amount of healthcare services, and of dying. One of the complications is that these probabilities depend on a large number of individual characteristics, such as demographic factors, socioeconomic status, current health conditions, and risk factors like eating, drinking, or smoking habits. The model will also need to capture the fact that every time we prevent someone from dying from one disease, this individual will now live longer and will have the opportunity to acquire some other disease. Therefore, for each intervention we consider, there will be a fine balancing act between health benefits and costs. Curing people or preventing people from acquiring a health condition has clearly positive health benefits, but when it comes to cost, things are a bit more complicated. There will be healthcare cost savings due to the fact that people are healthier. There will be positive effects on productivity because healthier people remain in the workforce longer. But there will also be additional healthcare costs stemming from the fact that people live longer. All of these costs and benefits must be accounted if we want to make informed decisions about investing our healthcare resources. Now, given the nature and the complexity of these problems, I believe that the best way to address them is using microsimulation methods. Microsimulations are basically video games without the jarring sounds and the fancy graphics. A microsimulation starts with a large population of synthetic individuals who differ along many individual characteristics and are representative of the community we are interested. For example, elderly people in New South Wales. When we turn the microsimulation on, each individual evolves over time according to a prescribed set of rules, the rules of the game. These rules represent the probabilities of developing a disease, utilizing healthcare services, and dying, and are statistical models derived from existing data. When we want to simulate an intervention, we change some rule of the game. For example, we make people stop developing a certain condition. Once we have developed a microsimulation of this type, the possibilities for its use are endless. We can change the intervention scenario, we can change the population of interest, and we can change the outcomes of interest, making this tool appealing to a variety of different stakeholders. Developing microsimulation of this type is clearly a complex effort that requires several key ingredients. Some serious skills in healthcare services research, statistical data analysis, and computer science, access to detailed population data sets, access to stakeholders who can tell us which are the most important problems to solve, and finally, an environment in which these factors can come together. That's why the University of Western Sydney will be working on this project with Capital Market CRC. Between the university, the CRC, and the industry partners, we will have all that is required. This is a very exciting opportunity, and I'm looking forward to provide you with updates on this project.